a video to talk you through our new EI Pro app. This app has been specifically created for iOS 8 and uh, is um, suitable for use on the iPhone 4S, iPhone 5, 5S, 6 and 6 Plus, which are the two new phones. So here I've got for demonstration uh, an iPhone 6 all set up and ready to go. So let's open up the app and let's talk you through the home screen. So first of all, if you want to get into settings, just press the setting icon here up in the top corner. And you'll see here lower down we've got scope modes. So um, scope one to five, and these are basically five settings that you can choose to have your camera in. So let's start off with scope one. So in order to start the camera, you can either do what we would do normally with endoscope eye, which is just turn around the um, device and the whole camera opens up on its own. Um, however, now you've got an option of either scoping in normal portrait by sliding to start the camera or sliding off or in landscape. So if you move it over to landscape, slide to start or slide to off there so you can get it in portrait landscape anywhere you want it to go. So let's um, open the app up in uh, normal portrait just as a demonstration. And what you'll notice first of all is um, these calipers on the screen. Now the calipers on the screen, the lower one here, helps you change the brightness, uh, which is the exposure value, which is E in the top right corner here. And the one on the left helps you change the focus, which is the F value, which is in the top right corner again. So let's do a scope demonstration. I'm going to scope the inside of my hand there. So first thing we need to do is call up the target. The target sits in the bottom left here. So we'll call the target up. And this is in order to get your picture centralized and um, sized up appropriately. So it's the maximum size for your screen. Let's get that right over. Once it's over, it's positioned over, we just press the target again. So what you've noticed here is that the picture immediately seems to be very, very good. And that's because the team have um, looked at all of the optimal settings and we've chosen some predetermined settings which are ideal for use on a rigid otoscope. So that's what its pre-default set, uh, pre-default setting is. Um, however, you have the ability, as I said, to adjust the brightness. So let's just do that now. So if we move the brightness along, you can see we can get a very bright picture and you can adjust it perfectly to however you want. You'll notice the values, the E value there changing according to how bright things are. So in order to set back to the default, you saw I just double tapped and that takes it back to default. So same with focus again. If you want to find focus, you can do with your manual focus. If you wanted to go back to default, just double tap. So that's the focus and exposure calipers to get you a great picture. Now, once you've adjusted this however you want to, if you leave it at that setting, that's exactly how it will stay in your scope one mode. So you'll see if we go back onto the uh, main menu, uh, if you go into scope two and open up the camera, this will now be at the default values we've set out before. But if we stop that and go back into scope one, this will now open up the previous settings that we had before um, ready to go. So it's really up to you as to what scope you're using, what light source combination, etc. You've got that freedom to have five different choices. Now, once the scope is set up, you might not want the calipers on screen. You might accidentally press them. You might not like the fact that they're in the way. So this is the active part of the screen here. All you need to do is just pinch down in the active part of the screen and you'll notice the calipers disappear. So now you can scope without any um, obstruction in the way of the camera and you've got a nice simple screen. At any point, if you want to call up the calipers to do some fine adjustment in the active part, just pinch out again and your calipers are called up on screen. So let's just close them down for now. We'll show you another function now, which is again fine tuning the picture. You may not wish to do this, but really if you really want to start getting your picture ideal for different light sources, this is an option. And it's to adjust the color temperature. So to bring the menu up in the active part of the screen, press and hold, and you bring up this color temperature menu. So I'm gonna scope the inside of my hand here and just give you a demonstration of what the color temperature does. So when we move over to one side, you'll see how the color temperature changes from a much redder, hotter, to a much more bluer, colder picture. And you can use this if you've got a xenon or a halogen bulb that changes somewhat the temperature so you can adjust. Now the key again here is that if you're not happy with the color picture, if you double tap, it will default down to what we feel is the best for a white balance. So that's color temperature. Now you can actually um, move along at the bottom here on this menu to the next option. And this is ISO setting. 
ISO, if you wish to adjust the ISO, if you're used to adjusting ISO on your own camera, then by all means you can do that to compensate for low light levels, but we'd recommend you leave that at a default of 32. Finally, the last option on the menu here really just shows you what all of your exposure, focus, color temperature levels are. Again, this is information for those users who are interested in that, but um, if you don't wish to have this, all you do is press and hold and all of that will disappear. So it's an option there that's available for you if you'd like to use it, but you don't need to. So recording is exactly the same. So let's record a video now in um, EI Pro and it's simply just tap to record. But now there's a new feature and that's sound. Now when you're scoping someone you might not necessarily want the introduction of the scope to be heard on your video so sound doesn't record immediately. However, we say get to the point where we reach the vocal cords. If you press and hold you'll see now this new icon appears at the bottom and you can hear me speaking. So that's my voice being recorded. Press and hold, still recording video but the voice has gone off and stop. So let's go back into the image library and see how that's come out. So back into portrait mode to get into the image library, library and we'll just go into here and we'll play back this video and see what it shows. Here's the picture. And the sound will come. If you press and hold, you'll see now this new icon appears at the bottom and you can hear me speaking. So that's my voice being recorded. And the sound goes off again. So there's an example of how the uh, app can now record um, uh, to look for hoarse voice or vocal cord palsy, anything that you want to uh, look at. But it's omitted uh, the parts, say for example, when you're actually going in with the endoscope. So a nice little feature there in EI Pro. So uh, what we'll do now is just quickly talk you through the uh, settings. Um, to get to the settings, just press the cog in the top right. Uh, you'll see the settings here are pin entry. Now, you can actually enable Touch ID. If you do that, you have to put in a password. Let's just put in 1111 for now. And that enables your um, password. Now, uh, we'll also uh, enable Touch ID. So if you do have an iPhone 5S, the 6 or the 6 Plus, um, all you need to do is just put your um, fingerprint on there and you immediately get access to the settings and same to the library. So if, let's go into the library here. Now because we've used our Touch ID, we're able to get into the library. So let's go back into the settings again. Uh, the disclaimer just gives you the option of having our disclaimer that will come up on the screen um, when you start the app and not after that. It's important to read through. The manual will upload, which shows um, how you use the app. And again, it's pretty much what we're talking about in this video. Uh, this is another important feature, which is our email support. If you have any questions, just to send us an email, we'll be happy to help you out. Um, just as a note, image storage in the photo library is just if you'd like to share your app library with your photo library. This is particularly useful if the only way of you getting your pictures onto a PC is by plugging the phone directly into the PC, almost using it like flash drive, then what you'll need to do is share your app library with your photo library. Um, however, we have that default as, as off as the, um, as the images get stored in the app library. Finally here, the return to main screen option basically means that every time you um, use the app and you exit it for whatever reason you finish scoping, no matter where you are, so let's exit it now, Whenever you go back into the app, you'll always return to the main screen. So we recommend that you um, keep that feature on. So there are the um, uh, features in the new EI Pro app. The app is um, being submitted to the Apple Store and uh, will be available for download very soon. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great advance on the previous app and uh, will give you excellent imaging quality. Um, if you require any support at all, just email us at uh, support at endoscope-i.com. Thank you.